When it comes to digital twins or virtual likenesses of a person designed by artificial intelligence, what do we need to know about the legal side of things? With the SAG after strike happening right now, this is starting to become more of a prevalent discussion. So let's talk with everybody's favorite IP and entertainment lawyer, Tony, to find out more. My name is Tony Oikasis. I'm an adjunct professor of entertainment law and IP at New York Law School. And I have an Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok account called the IP Professor that is dedicated to all things intellectual property. Tony, with the SAG after strike happening right now, one of the things we're hearing about is digital twins or actors having an AI, artificial intelligence generated version of them in movies for editing or doing commercial work for things that is using their likeness, their voice, their faces, maybe with or without their permission. So what does this look like from that copyright, from that trademark, from that intellectual property standpoint? Uh, great question, and I think it, this is uh, uh, this SAG strike is extremely significant for a lot of reasons. One, obviously, we can't ignore that this is the first time in sixty years that uh, the SAG uh, the the actors have gone on strike against Hollywood. Two, this is also the second time in history that SAG and the Writers Guild have both jointly entered a strike. This is happening happening now, and it also happened back in nineteen sixty. And three, what is on the agenda in terms of the topics in the bargaining table, it's very contentious and obviously it shows and highlights how we've really transitioned in terms of uh, the Hollywood industry, its approach to new media and much more. So um, for anybody that hasn't been following, what Cam is referencing to is an extremely controversial proposal that AMPTP, the Alliance of Motion Picture and Television Producers, has proposed at the bargaining table with SAG-AFTRA. The it's an AI proposal that they've said, uh, essentially what it lays out is that they would pay background performers a day rate under SAG-AFTRA, which is more or less about 1,080 bucks. They pay them that day rate, they scan their entire likeness, and once that likeness is scanned, now that actor's likeness can be used in commercial work, in background work for films, for television shows, in any type of media that Hollywood studios or production companies typically produce for streaming, for film, for television programming, what have you. And uh, anytime that background, like background actor's likeness is used, uh, the, the, that actor would not be paid any additional money and no consent would be uh, required, uh, additional consent at least, for that actor to be used in future projects. So literally, if I were a background actor and my likeness were scanned, my likeness could be used for 50 years in... 50 commercials in 50 television shows and 50 movies. And I would not get a single dime for any appearance that I made. My likeness was made, uh, appears in, in any of those commercials, TV shows, or films. And this is obviously very problematic. Um, you know, as it is the residual, uh, landscape with SAG after is very, very contentious. And that's one of the other reasons why this strike is happening because actors, are seeing a massive discrepancy when it comes to residuals for network for basic television versus what they see on the streaming platforms. So they're looking for some sense of equity pay in that regard. Typically, when a likeness, uh, when an actor appears in a television show or film, they are they receive a residual. Um, it seems very weird that that isn't being brought up with this AI proposal. If that's the way of the future, at the bare minimum, that should have been brought up by AMPTP. Um, mm -hmm. so I think that that's already a, a big blunder there, but two, I have a big problem with the whole using an actor's likeness without consent. Um, especially if you're going to use it in specific projects that maybe the actor themselves isn't aligned with, or the yeah. actor themselves doesn't want to be a part of, mm -hmm. um, at the bare minimum, their consent should be something that, uh, again, should have been brought up in the initial conversation, but hasn't even been, uh, accepted by AMPTP. So this is obviously very contentious. The whole angle that this is getting into is personality rights, uh, which involves the use of one's name, image, and likeness for commercial use. And I think that this is, this whole AI proposal is really bringing to the forefront what I have often long considered as the redheaded stepchild of intellectual property. Everybody talks about copyright. Everybody talks about trademarks. Everybody talks about patents, trade secrets, trade dress, but no one gives love to personality rights. And not many people realize that this that personality rights are a very, very important aspect of intellectual property, oftentimes something that you see every single day. For example, the whole Barbie movie marketing that you've seen left and right everywhere. Anytime you see Margot Ro Robbie and Ryan Gosling on the movie poster for the Barbie movie, you have to understand that their actor agreement includes them expressly giving permission to have their name, image, and likeness 
their personality rights to be used in any marketing in connection with Warner Brothers' uh, Barbie movie. That is only their likeness is only appearing because they gave express consent to Warner Brothers to have their likeness appear in movie posters and trailers in TV commercials and any uh, 30 second ads that run on a streaming platform. They have expressly given their consent to have their likeness used in that manner. So we see personality rights all the time. We've mm -hmm. seen lawsuits related to personality rights happen quite often. Um, and so I think that this is a very, very hot button issue and something that we should all be paying attention to. And hopefully there'll be a resolution soon, but this is really, really something that, uh, that I think is going to change the landscape of Hollywood for sure. Let's say there are young actors who are just starting to learn about this and just kind of figuring out how this is applicable to them. What types of things should they be mindful of to make sure they're protecting their personality rights? So this is all going to start with having great representation. Uh, if you're an actor that, or a, a, a rising actor, someone that is interested in entering the acting business, uh, you need to be very, very mindful of how cutthroat this industry can be. So this is all going to depend on having good representation. And I even say that with an asterisk because there are times where talent agents and uh, rep uh, representation, legal representation in the Hollywood business can be itself a little bit corrupt. Th th this happens all the time. So you need to surround yourselves with good financial advisors, good talent reps, good agents, people that are going to work to your advantage, that are going to work for you, not against you. And hey, if you need to have interviews with different agents and really scout out and find people that are willing to work with you and are honest, good, willing people, then you know you found the right people to represent you. That's step one to this whole thing. Two is to really become acquainted with how the Hollywood business works. So reading up on literature, even following the news of this act strike is immense, Im immeasurably helpful because at the bare minimum, you know what are the contentious issues that are at play with AMPTP and SAG-AFTRA. You can learn about what projects SAG-AFTRA uh, is saying you cannot work on, which is which is essentially any struck projects that includes film, television shows, um, anything that is being produced by a stru struck company. You mm -hmm. can learn about what projects you can work on, like certain com uh, commercials, indie projects, music videos. Those kinds of things are uh, allowed under the SAG strike. Having that type of knowledge is going to be helpful. And I would say third and most importantly, you know, I think having any type of exposure, you know, again, once the strike ends, um, having any type of exposure is going to help you become acquainted with where your sweet spot is, where you're going to find your niche uh, in the acting business. Maybe you will get a big break as a result of appearing in one commercial or appearing in kind of like a tertiary role in a TV show. You never know what's going to happen. Um, so I think having as much exposure uh, is going to be great to build a, a solid resume for you in Hollywood. And that's all going to depend on having a good talent agent, someone that's going to help get you auditions, someone that's going to help you uh, send out uh, reels or any sort of, um, you know, uh, gigs that might be helpful to building that resume. All that's going to be immeasurably helpful to building your Hollywood career. Okay, let's project into the future a little bit because we know that the future of AI is coming and digital twins are going to be a resource for people who are creating content. From the entrepreneurial lens, sometime in the future, we may have access to digital twins of people to help with our marketing in videos, in our content we're creating for social media, et cetera. So what do we as entrepreneurs need to be aware of to make sure we are ethically and legally getting this handled in the proper way in the future when this becomes available to us? So it's all going to derive mainly on what the legal landscape is going to be for AI. We've talked about this before in all our previous videos. You can obviously check them out in uh, Cam's playlist. But the whole essence of AI right now is that it's an unregulated industry. There is no regulation to it whatsoever. We have no legislation in any capacity related to AI. The only guidance that we have, if anything related to AI, is from the Copyright Office, where they have given clear-cut, explicit information that anything that is um, created using artificial intelligence, whether that's by way of an art piece, uh, video, anything AI generated, generative AI works will never receive copyright protection because they lack human authorship. Human authorship, according to the Copyright Office, is, is essential to uh, the creation of an original work of authorship under the basic tenets of copyright law. We have case law that has seemed to reinforce this point about human authorship as well. So this has been our only lighthouse, if anything, related to AI. The only time we're going to see any change uh, across the board with AI is if legislation passes. So I think if we're looking into the future, 
we're going to have a better idea of things once Congress passes law or once we have better case law that can give us guidance about how the, tre the general treatment of, of AI at the bare minimum within the intellectual property space. In terms of the ethics of it, I think that that's still something to be determined. That might that might also get to uh, case law helping evolve that that format. Now, if you are an entrepreneur that does content creation and you want to benefit from AI creation, and let's say, you know, to your point, Cam, let's say you want to create a digital twin. Let's say that you found an actor's likeness on, let's say, uh, a platform like Pexels or uh, Adobe Stock or some other platform where video and photo content is made available to you. And let's say that in 10, 50, 20 years from now, they have the opportunity to create AI generated video that features these actors likenesses. That's where you're also going to have to look at the terms and conditions of these platforms. If, uh, you know, typically when you download, uh, and let's stick to like what we know now, when you download from Shutterstock or from Adobe, let's say standard royalty free video, it's understood that the likeness of all those actors that are within that stock video, they've already given their sign off on it. So you don't have to get any additional clearances. That's why it's called royalty free. It's a one and done affair. It's a one and done license. You just pay the license fee and then you can use it in perpetuity in any type of project. It's not editorial in nature. So it's not the kind of thing where you can only use it within a specific capacity. It, it's typically uh, covers all, all aspects of, of media production. If actor consents are done in, the capa in, in that type of capacity with royalty free video, you would hope that if an Adobe stock or Shutterstock did make AI generation of an actor's likeness available to users that download videos, you would hope that in the terms and conditions, or at least in some type of details page on that asset, they say this actor's likeness has been cleared for use uh, on a royalty free basis. If that's the case, then you know you're good to go. But again, a lot of variables, it's going to depend on whether or not that's the approach by these types of juggernaut media conglomerates, or if the onus is on the individual user to get that actor's clearance, to get that actor's consent, to use their likeness in a, in a generative AI produced type of uh, capacity. A lot of unique variables to it, but I will say this is all going to start as step one with solid legislation that will lay out clearly what the standard is with artificial intelligence. And if you want to refine that to the copyright space, to the trademark space, to even the personality rights space, it would be wonderful. And as a matter of fact, I've even been on the record saying that, uh, and you can check out my videos on this at the IP Professor, I've talked about this. The, right now, personality rights are only regulated at the state level. They are not regulated at the federal level. All right. other aspects of IP are regulated at the federal level. The way you can solve the problem, the personality right dile dilemma, by is by having it federally protected across all 50 states and creating some type of personality right federal legislation that directly addresses AI. Th this could be the first domino effect that maybe then leads to widespread federal legislation for personality rights that isn't necessarily at the AI level. But either way, I think that the way you solve this problem is with some type of passage of law at Ca Capitol Hill. Capitol Hill tends to move slow. So I guess the only two words I can say there is good luck. <laughs> and as we continue to watch for that very slow movement forward, we are going to be keeping you up to date, especially as new features with AI roll out and that legislation pertaining to artificial intelligence. So if you have questions, drop those down below. Tony's coming back for upcoming episodes. And as always, you can hang out with Tony on his social media where he drops even more fantastic knowledge. Tony, where can everybody find you? You can find me on Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok at the IP Professor, and you can check out my entertainment law podcast called End Scene. New episode drop every Friday on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Hit the subscribe and notification bell because the AI discussion is continuing here on the channel. We do have a full playlist for the legal side of things and then the ethical and creative side of AI use in entrepreneurship to help you make the most of saving your time and effort to work on what really matters inside of your business while keeping you legally protected. We also drop daily videos to help you navigate the world of social media marketing, content creation, and making this your most profitable year ever. We'll see you in the upcoming videos.